to the public. Oh, you want me to say that again? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I didn't know we were getting started. I didn't hit record quite yet. Oh, we can wait. We just seem like we have Peter and... Hi, Peter. Hi. Have we met? I don't know if we have or not. Okay, well, welcome been to in the, the same sports room. sector. Well, yeah. Welcome to the sports sector meeting. I'm Bill Brandmeyer. Um, yeah, Robin I thought you guys knew each other. No, I've never met Peter before. Peter was at our last meeting, Bill, so that you weren't okay. able to make. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, Peter, yeah. maybe do you just want to, uh, here, we, we can just do some quick introductions again. You know us, Peter, from last time, but I'm Robin Shook at Children's Mercy, director of the Kansas City Healthy Lifestyles Collaborative. Natalie, do you want to ask? Oh, skip. My name is Natalie. Um, I'm also part of that team and support several of our Kansas City physical activity plan uh, sector groups, one being the sports sector. Oh. And the infamous Bill Brandmeyer. I'm Bill Brandmeyer, and, and I've been a part of the sports sector for about two and a half years now, I guess. I don't know, three, maybe two years. Then I don't like four. How many? Four years? No, oh, I see time flies when you're having fun, Robin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I have um, invested in helping kids play sports for the last five years um, and looking for ways to use sports to make kids better. Um, and one of the things that, you know, has become super important to me is physical activity for kids. Um, even beyond sports, I think get, getting kids to move their bodies uh, correctly and, and having fun moving their bodies and being physically active outdoors is good for their mental health and, and good for their development. And so um, being a part of the Kansas City Physical, Physical Activity Plan for me is kind of part of the passion I bring to life, which is how do you share the message um, that has impacted your, your life so, so profoundly. And so that's what I do is, is um, been a part of the sports sector. We have worked through um, some ideas of how we think we can leverage uh, different opportunities out there to help kids. Um, we're primarily in the sports sector. We focused on youth sports because um, initially we thought it was um, the sports sector's responsibility to, to, to kind of weaponize sports as a physical activity mechanism for kids. And um, it's not that we've excluded adults into the sports sector deal because we, we've had um, Casey Crew as a part of the sports sector in the past. And and reached out into the millennials and, and the young adults and young professionals and tried to incorporate the physical activity idea into what they do because they're so strongly involved in getting people out doing some fun, you know, events like kickball and, and frisbee golf and things like that. So um, they, they have volleyball leagues and, and other kinds of, of things, but mostly we focus on youth development, youth, youth sports and how to make the youth sports landscape um, more um, inclusive. And so our strategies are set around that. And as we have worked through this, we've made the decision to ask the Aspen Institute to perform one of their community activity reports that they have done in uh, 14 other cities. It's called the State of Play uh, for our specific area, which is Kansas City. And it's a mini report for them, but it's major for us. And they started last November and they have produced, uh, they did over 4,200 surveys of kids throughout the city. And they have written a report for us. That report is finished. Um, we've had some time to comment on it. They've done a little bit more investigation added to it and they're ready to print it and send it at, back to us so we can distribute it throughout the city. So that's what the sports sector has been all about for the four years that I've been involved. Awesome. Uh, well, by way of brief introduction, uh, Robin said, Pete Piscatello, um, and I was here last month. I actually, I came to the, uh, was it, gosh, May uh, was the uh, the Project Play thing. Um, I've been actually involved in, and been going to Project Play summits since I think the first one uh, in, in wow. D.C. So, uh, I've done that for for quite a while. Um, probably the best introduction. So currently, I'm with um, and have been for seven years. Play like a champion. Uh, Play like a champion today. Educational series. Uh, I'm in Overland Park, so so I'm local. But um, we work nationally uh, with character based education for coaches and parents. 
Uh, so for example, I was at a school down in Tulsa this past weekend, uh, training all their coaches. It was a K through eight school in this case, but I'll be at a high school next weekend, uh, training all the coaches in kind of character-based education, um, and then parents as well in ways to support sort of healthy development for youth sports. So, um, we kind of come at it from the angle of, um, long-term athlete development, uh, and, and physical literacy and starting on, on that level. We also do work in um, Chicago, west side of Chicago, South Bend, Indiana, uh, which is where we originated from. Um, our executive directors just retired after 43 years at Notre Dame uh, as, a, as a professor. So, uh, and then Philadelphia now. So three uh, sort of inner city areas where the, the goal is more um, collective impact in creating opportunities for kids uh, where they don't necessarily exist, obviously in a, you know, Johnson County, different than Wyandotte County um, and and things like that. And so we try to create some of it's more training people who are already in place and some of it is creating opportunities where they don't exist. So we do all of that. Uh, my background from 2010 to 2017, I ran the CYO uh, for Johnson and Wyandotte counties here. So um, all the Catholic schools in Johnson and Wyandotte counties, their their sports programs, so predominantly third through eighth grade. So I say that to say I'm uh, uh, not only passionate about the youth sports level, and and like you said, obviously um, up to adults as well. But I certainly think it starts with uh, the youngest uh, and and teaching them, giving them opportunities and and creating opportunities and making sure all kids have a chance to get involved. And then you know once you do that sort of appropriate development uh, as you grow up. So um, yeah, was excited to find a way I could get involved and and certainly passionate about uh, our local community and how we do that here. So. Well, we are certainly like-minded um, and you, you are welcome to join me as the co-lead of the sports sector at any time. So Robin, I think we just found our co-lead right here. <laughs> Last uh, month, um, unfortunately, I was unable to attend, but um, my co-lead did step down and we do have a vacancy, um, all, all jokes aside, um, if you're interested in in working closer together yeah. on this, um, we have an opportunity. It's basically show up to these meetings once a month and then there's some core group meetings that we meet with all the other sectors and um, we talk about, um, you know, how we leverage our passion for life and you know kids to to make it make Kansas City more physically active and um I think this this is a great time to come along and, and come around and and we can I can talk more with Robin off, offline about it but um I would also love to talk to you offline about what you do with play for uh, play like a champion because I've been watching them for you know you know didn't know there was somebody in Kansas City representing them um and, you know, we have opportunities to create events where you could get in front of people and share your message and um, targeting parents and targeting coaches is one of our strategies for change. And, and so it's, we're lined up perfectly and we do share waves, not, not to make this about share waves, but share waves do, does three things. We fund kids who don't have the money to play. We create camps and clinics to deliver high quality experiences to kids who can't get to high quality experiences. And then we try to educate coaches and parents on social emotional skill sets that make them weaponize sports to make kids better. And it sounds like we're in the same field, yeah. do the same thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Robin, anything to add? No, I don't think so. Uh, just a couple like clarify clarifying or additional things on the report launch. Like Bill said, Tuesday, uh, September 17th is when the report will be released. Um, there will be a social media kit that is available to partners. If you know, like here's Peter, if you're mm -hmm. interested, of course, Bill's, uh, Bill's got a large reach with his, with his organization too, um, to, to share the report, um, then, um, I think we're also going to do, I think John Solomon from Aspen is going to, uh, get, a submit a letter to the editor, uh, to the Kansas city star. We're going to try to connect with Toriano to make sure it has kind of a prominent place in there. He did something similar 
um, recently, just like a few months ago with the Aspen to, I think it's Parachute, is that the name of the town? Aspen to Parachute re report release. He got he got an op-ed published in their, in their paper that basically you know, elevates the report and the need within the area. Um, <clears throat> and I'm working with uh, Children's Mercy Communications and Marketing to do uh, to to work on a release um, strategy as well. I don't think that we're going to have a like an in person event just yet. I think our plan is to release the report and hopefully um, in the months following we will get some. Uh, momentum behind some of the specific strategies, implementation of the strategies that they outline in the in the report, and we can have an in-person event when those things start to take off. So we can like an announce, you know, I don't know, the chiefs or something like that taking on ownership of this initiative or that, that so strategy. One thing, that, Robin, we can do is ask. Um, you know, and I they wouldn't say no to me is to to, to produce an hour of radio show um, that we could turn into a evergreen podcast um, that we could share out um, the the day of or you know the week before or we have a month right it's the thirteenth that's coming out on the seventeenth of September so huh. um, I'm sure Chad Boger at eight ten would help produce a show a special show we could have john on as a guest we could maybe just get on the seren petro show or maybe takes like the six to seven o'clock hour um or maybe he might um ask you know one of his talents to to feature it on their show for half an hour and we just do that um probably get more bang for our buck if it was on one of the current shows there but they certainly would um help us if, if we thought that was worth our effort um no, totally I, yeah i think that that's great bill okay um let me put something together and have you review it and then i'll send it uh, i'll i'll send an email to chad boger and copy you on it and, yeah um, and peter on that show we could have you on too um, I certainly would love to have you as a guest on my podcast, Movement is the Medicine, too, um, just to kind of hear more about how you've been working in this space and what it's meant to you. And your experience with CYO is probably something really worthy of talking about, too. Um, and, um, you know, that um, the more energy we can bring to this whole idea of the work that that Aspen has done and the work that the Children's Mercy and, and the Healthy Lifestyles collaborative has done it's it's better for all you know it's like as the tide rises it's good for all boats you know and so um you know we want to elevate not only what we're doing in the sports sector but what everyone's doing in every sector and the more we can do that the better yeah so let's take a big swing <laughs> um yeah, and uh, I guess and Bill, I'm, I mean, and I'm guessing they're going to want to do some news cover. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the the, the news uh, will will you know the PR department at Children's Mercy or or my PR people would get the message out to the producers of of the local news to 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 get it out there too. So, yeah, you know the the there was a lot of interest after the summit uh, in the summit. Right. Uh, right. Of course, that was also timing with the. Uh, stadium vote and things so some of it was they wanted to see frank white on sure. frank white, but hey but that's that's okay but if we could get you know someone like kathy um to come on or get someone like even mayor lucas to talk about his signing of the children's bill of rights then it just i think we could make a really cool show out of it so the sooner the better, I think, on that, and and I'll take the initiative to to try to produce it and get it ready, um, and then, um, you know, I want to, you know, I'm not, I I, I want to be careful. I'm not trying to push myself into the spotlight. I just I want you both to know that you and you and Natalie and, you know, um, and I and I want to. I'm sure that you know that Katie is working with the Parks and Rec group and they're 
starting to write some things about how they want to work together. And they've asked me to participate as an advisor. And I really am honored and, and flattered and excited. So um, I, I never want to make this more about me personally than it is about the collective. So um, hold me accountable. I, I give you permission. So yeah, totally. Yeah, no, no, that's not we, we don't think like that at all. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we appreciate all the, you've got these good ideas and those experiences in communication that are, that, you know, we so, don't really, so. So given the fact that we're just going to announce it and launch it, um, they also talked about doing a bigger um, kind of conference in the first, in 2025. Is that correct? Uh, I, I think it's just the, they want to do an in-person event when we have something that's actually being implemented. I think that that's what it is, what that looks like. Uh, so they wanna give us time to decide what we're gonna do with the recommendations that they make to us. Yeah, it's kind of so, uh, uh, and we talked about this last time, so Peter knows a little bit about it. You know, basically it's like, a, can be called anything, some call it a certification program, some call it a recognition program, some variation on that is what they're interested in. Um, and uh, then there would be, we've kind of pushed them that in addition, we want to have resources available for organizations. So we're not just recognizing organizations that are doing these things that, that align with the Children's Bill of Rights, that we can also support organizations who aren't there yet so they can get there, elevating them up. And so we don't know exactly what type of financial resources are going to be needed, but there will be some. And so that's kind of one thing that is a little uncertain at this so point. There, what I think I hear you saying is that they're leaving it up to us to take their recommendations and decide a path forward. Are you are you hoping that the sports sector takes the initiative as to follow up with the next step? Now that we've you know spent a hundred thousand dollars on having this report done, yeah. Now the sports sector has to plan forward about what it is we're going to do with it. Yeah, ex exactly right. Exactly right. And, and does that make sense to you? And. So so, so Peter, I just want to make sure you're, it's clear. Is it, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what I, what that means to me is that whoever co-leads the sports sector with me and whoever comes to these sports sector meetings in the future will be tasked with laying out a plan to present to the city and the com the companies that are interested in helping to support some forward thinking initiatives, one or two or three or how many that would take the recommendations from the study and implement them throughout the city. And when we are ready to present that, the Aspen will come back and have a conference with us and let us present that. Is that correct? Yeah, that's pretty close. The only thing I would say is like, if, if you remember from their initial draft that they sent around, this idea, the the cert, we'll call it the certification program for just uh, simplicity, sure. was supported by um, Children's Mercy and the the professional sports teams. That was like what they wanted, uh, what they envisioned, and you know I assumed it wasn't laid out in the report, but at, at some level there probably has to be some sort of resource commitment from the institutions involved to kind of support that. And we talked about last month uh, at the last sports sector meeting, um, Jay, Peter was there, Adrian was there, um, that if the pro sports teams don't come on, what are, what's the next steps then? And so it's either, uh, probably some combination of both internal children's mercy support and external support from philanthropic or uh, business 
uh, entities supporting this. Um, so, so yeah, I think that that's, that's like the one, one clarification I would add to what you said, Bill. Okay. Um, well, and so, so I'm going to, I'm <clears throat> moving forward right now just to see what the temperature is at Children's Mercy for things like this. Um, obviously we, we got money to, to do the Aspen project. Uh, that was kind of a one-time, uh, one-time grant that I received. So, uh, figuring out, you know, what do we do? Do we do like a well, simple sure one-time thing or what? I'm sure the people that, that said yes to that grant would love to see the results of that money. And, and then once they see that, they'll hopefully have some sense of what they want to do with it. So like, and I think that once we are able to show the chiefs and the Royals and sporting and, and any of the other um, smaller, you know, sports teams in the city, that we have this idea of a coalition that that would certify youth sports programs and and give them a, a blessing to, to to these are the programs that are implementing the strategies that we uncovered when we spent the money to do this report. I think we can convince them to to pony up something. Um, the Royals for sure. Um, you know, I, I just I'm not for sure, but. You know, I'd I'd be really shocked if Lewis Mays doesn't see this report and go, yeah, we, the Royals want to be a part of this. Um, yeah, and there are things like even like you know, I think we all think that we don't we don't want to recreate the wheel here. So like, if an organization is already doing some good things, like the Royals are already doing some really good things with their coaching development and and things like that you know, we'll just like, hopefully be able to partner with them for those types of things. And so even if it's not a financial commitment, it's just a partnership. And Sure. Well, there's also okay. the, uh, I think this is on the document Natalie put in the, the chat, but the World Cup, uh, which I met one of the, he's the head of sustainability for our World Cup committee here. Um, his name escapes me, but we met at the- uh, Adam. Adam, yeah, out at uh, Project Play, yeah. actually. He was in Baltimore um, and uh, got to know each other a little bit. And I'm sure certain they would be, in whatever capacity, interested in in some type of collaboration. I know they're they're very, very invested in um, the legacy. In fact, that was what he presented on. He was on a panel that presented on the legacy of 26 um, in the local community. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that that's exactly right. And um, I don't know. I haven't spoken with him for a couple months. We've swapped some emails, but we're supposed to connect here soon. Um, I don't know, Bill, if you've talked to him him recently, but you know, there's he is definitely interested. Uh, I think that there's you may have kind of seen in the news there's a lot of flux happening with the organizing committee, so. Um, I think there's a little bit of uncertainty about exactly yeah. what what they can do, but I think he's thinking the right way. Yes, um, and I don't know how much influence he has over the the new leadership at the nonprofit. You know, that's in charge. I do <laughs> know that he represents FIFA, and. And he has a role to play and he has a background in doing some pretty innovative implementations and activations in in the northwest in oregon where he's from um i did i and i talked to robin about this when we had our one-off um catching me up but you know he i did watch his his presentation and and i felt of all the cities that that were there and represented in that breakout um, Kansas City seemed to be the most kind of obtuse, like they had really yeah. not really quite know what they wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, New York has a very defined plan of the pitches yeah. they're putting in and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 And and so maybe that what happens with this report is they they decide that this is something that is worth their energy and, uh -huh. and we get Mayor Lewis and the people that 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 he has on this nonprofit team that's that's working and I have a relationship with Neil Sharma who's part of that team he's the vice chair of 
of that group and the new leader um you know i don't i'm so, i'm sure she's drinking from the fire hose and has no time to think um about what's what we're talking about yet but at some point we need to be ready when they're ready so that's how i kind of feel about it is is as soon as they're ready to sit down and talk to us we need to have a pretty clear idea of what it is we're talking about and what it might look like if we're going to be a part of the enormous opportunity that the world cup is and you know it's bigger than just one organization like play like a champion it's it's a coalition of all of us and we want to do something big and and so um you know it's the one the good thing is the stars could really align for for this with the aspen institute's deal in two years and and they're ready and we're ready and we have an idea of what it is and we have the chiefs and the royals and sporting and or it could also be like you know a very frustrating thing that we go through i just don't know so um i had to guess the the world cup committee would end up being more interested in something that's very um tangible yeah. In terms of of I mean, like the fields they're doing in New York, stuff like that is is seems more up the alley of what they've tried to do and what I see other cities doing around that. Whereas you know the local teams might be a little more interested in something like that, whatever we call we're calling it, yeah. recognition or sort of like that type of thing might be a little more up the local teams alley. Yeah, I think I think you're totally right, Peter. It's um, how do you leave a legacy? that is clear and precise versus how do you maintain a relationship with the community over a long period of time yeah. and make change yeah. happen. So good. Um, um, in terms of like some like concrete next steps for uh, th this group, um, I think the, uh, the, the report is, off to the off to the printers basically right now um have you seen the final final no i think that uh i think they thought maybe next week it might be completed uh that might be a stretch it could be the week after that uh but end of the month essentially i think is when they're gonna have it have it uh finished um, and then they're going to develop their, and Natalie, cor correct me if I have any of these dates wrong, but then I think in um, the beginning of September is when they're going to uh, develop their sample press releases and social media kit that other organizations can adopt. So that might be like the uh the next thing would be to line up all those other things. So if you think um, your organization or any other organizations locally that might be interested in this, um, like the toolkit, just let us know and we can get them added to that distribution list. Um, then Bill, of course, like you, you've got a lot of great ideas with the um, 810 stuff. Um, I, you know, I'll let kind of you lead that since I have no idea what the lead times and things like that are for those, yeah. but, um, yeah, I also think, um, the, the guy on 710 would be, would be interested in this, um, I'm blanking on his name, Pete Mundo, Mundo in the morning has a pretty good people, a lot of, a lot of local <laughs> you know, support and um, he would probably help us so I can reach out to him too. Um, Casey, you are probably would do something um, as, as would possibly um, Flatlanders at KCPT. Uh, the public yeah, station. actually, so, Natalie, will you help me remember to connect to um, that guy from who, who has worked with Flatland and the pitch? Remember him? Um, I we've been emailing with Katie yeah. about some other things. Mike Sherry. Mike Sherry, yeah, that's right. Let's yeah. let's reach out to him with that. Um, 
So, and Wayman King has asked if he could see the report, and I have hesitated to send it to him, um, especially the draft. I, yeah. Um, but I, if, if I don't know when we want local uh, stakeholders to to see it, if if we want them to see it before it's published. Um, yeah, that's a you good know question. who King is. Yeah, uh, Natalie met with him. Um, and, and Natalie did, I think. Uh, I think Aspen mentioned that that it was possible to share the report if there's an embargo on it. Do you remember them saying that or not? Maybe that's just with the news agencies. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I had it in the notes that he's going to share it with us on the 19th of this month. All right, yeah. that's Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, I can just ask John if it's okay if I share it with the the director of development at at uh, the director of youth development at Boys and Girls Club. I I think it is because technically he's got added to our advisory board, so it won't be a problem to share with him. Okay, great. Um. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll we'll meet technically we'll meet one more time before the official launch, right? Yeah. Why don't we, Natalie, try to schedule the next sports sector meeting, um, the second week of September before the launch. Yeah, the eleventh. Yeah, that would be good. Five days. Okay. And at that, we'll have a clear idea of everything that's happening. We'll have the report. We can share the toolkits for sharing the toolkit. The yeah, all of that. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. That um document I shared, did you see that, Bill? I did. I, I just opened it. Okay. I, I think that's the one they don't want us to share out with the general public because it like names certain organizations specifically that like haven't committed. That's just like um yeah. Our big wish list partners. <laughs> yeah, it's probably okay. not good to share that. <laughs> I won't share this. <laughs> Is so this was written to who? Um we, I think am I the audience to help us this? kind of make a framework for the certification program. Awesome. Jennifer okay, so this and her made written it. to us as yeah. the audience. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is cool. Okay. I'll read it in more detail um, and try to understand it. Yeah, um, at the last meeting, I think Jay mentioned he was gonna reach out to the people at Vanderbilt um, and see if they might be able to meet with us, <laughs> but I haven't heard from him, so we need to follow up with him, but we might do that after the report release. Okay. Yeah, they, they have done quite a good job there. Um, in tennis in nashville for sure yeah it's a nice nice model for mm. what, we, what they Sweet. might want to need you guys would have a better sense of maybe than i would but this this certification this that's in this document this kind of thing th there's not much like this out there um i think there's a sense that we could get almost like working in a weird way in terms of promotion um there's probably even some national media that would pick up on it that would get people locally more excited about it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking the Aspen Institute, the one that comes to mind is I keep seeing Linda Flanagan in op-eds in you know, New York Times and everything else um, who wrote, she wrote a book on youth sports last year, very good book. And she spoke at Project Play and I'm sure is frequently in contact with John Solomon. Um, but people they, that that seems to be getting some traction nationally. So I just wonder if there's also some opportunity to if we're going to implement something like this locally, get some national recognition that then helps the local community sort of. You know, I think I love I love how you're thinking. Um, and, you know, there's a certain. There's a certain uh, sphere of influence that it, that Union Broadcasting 810 WHB yeah. have with the athletic and with ESPN. Mm -hmm. 
that if I ask Chad to elevate this conversation to mm -hmm. that national level, we might be able to get, you know, Jeff Passan or or one of those writers to take a shot at this. I know we did have one of those guys at the summit. I, I forget who it was exactly. Um, well, uh, Dennis Dennis Dodd was was good. Dennis Dodd, uh, yeah, he's yeah. local, oh, well, that uh, but it was March. It was like March Madness. I think the Final Four was maybe that night or yeah. before or something like that. Maybe. Well, I think he's on the radio, so I know Chad. You know, I know that those radio guys have those producers have those relationships, and so if I can figure out a way to do the show, then I can elevate the show and let maybe get one of those guys to come on and, and write an article and then talk about it. So, um, or they, they may know, John might know John. I know John's really good friends with, with someone. Um, I think Dennis, I think that Dennis. was the deal. He was trying yeah. to get Dennis to come and, uh, and he just couldn't because so of that him. might be the guy. Yeah. My he sense is that, and that and hit you guys have been working with them throughout this but my sense is this is this particular idea the project play would be very excited about and be willing to put their 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 muscle behind you know promoting the implementation of it i think this is what they're expecting from us peter i yeah. do <laughs> um and yeah the, you know, the goal would be to get tom ferry to 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 jump all over this and be excited about it so yeah. Um, and so that's why I say it's, you know, it's, that's the opportunity that lays before us and there's, it's not a huge heavy lift, but there's some work that we have to do to, to, to get it, to get it ready. So that's luckily we have Natalie and Robin guiding us. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, guys, um, what else? Nat uh, Natalie, uh, I know you have an agenda. What? What have we missed? What have we? <laughs> You're muted. You. Most of the things we hit, but it's just like our HLC announcements, like our um, quarterly meeting is going to be September 26th um, at 9 a.m. And it's going to focus on the REACH project. Um, so each of the strategy areas will present what they are doing on the project. One of them is being physical activity, so that might be a somewhat of interest to this group. I've got the slide here, so you can register for the meeting. It's in person at the Kauffman Center, and breakfast will be served. Okay. Yeah, so this is just, you know, our uh, collaborative. We do lots of things beyond just youth sports, um, and so this is our quarterly meeting where we bring everyone together uh, just to share share what, in this case, what we're working on, uh, but most meetings we highlight the work of other partners. So, um, uh, should should be should be a good event. Yeah, and we'll probably since it'll be after the report release, we'll have a slide on that at this meeting too. Right. Yeah. For sure. And yeah, we, we talk about it every time, but um, yeah. Um, the one link that I put in the chat is for, um, this is something that you, no one may be interested in, but some may be. Uh, there is um, a national organization called Active Living Research. They do an annual conference and it's, uh, it's usually in places like San Diego or Charleston, or it was in Banff a couple years ago. It's actually being hosted at Kansas State University uh, in March of 2025. And um, it's uh, a mix of both like academic uh, presentations and also uh, what we call practitioner level presentations where we've got community organizations who do work around active living, which means lots of different things can, care, can come and share their work. So, we're probably going to do something. Uh, there's a lot of great work happening in Kansas City by a lot of different groups. We're trying to get a lot of Kansas City presence there. Um, so uh, if you're interested in <clears throat> um, like sharing the work of your organization, 
uh, feel free to uh, either submit yeah. something on your own or you can coordinate with us and we can try to get a group of, of uh, proposals being sent in. Um, and then hopefully we can all be kind of batched together and we can have like a half a day of, of all the great work okay. that's happening in Kansas That's City. great. Yeah. Um, and then at the same time, the sports medicine conference is coming to Kansas City that that in in the spring next year too. Yeah, I don't know those dates. Do you, Natalie? Somewhere we've got it. No, I feel like it's April maybe though. Um, yeah, I think it's April. Yeah, I, I didn't get a lot of people following up about that service project, but probably in the next month or so, we'll convene with Jay and try to brainstorm some ideas for what that could be. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Anything hey, throw else my to contact know? info out in the April, chat as well, April 20, by the way. It's April 22nd through the 27th. Yeah, yeah. yeah great. Thanks, Peter. Thanks yeah. for putting that in there. Cool. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, Peter. I have your.